Peace, peace. This is part two to the lesson I just uploaded entitled Tracing Our Human Genetics. Alright, this is part two. I just uploaded part, I'm uploading part one right now. Now, what I want to do is, now we're about to get into DNA. Now, we have been seeing so far that black people are the, or Africans are the 100% humans, right? And their own, own science is saying that our, de our, our genes, our DNA is not of this earth. It's not from here. Okay? It's not from here. Now, let's hear it one time. I'm trying to answer the question for you. Where the fuck we come from? Ain't no poof magical God just popped out of somewhere. He has to have an origin, so we know that God, the being, is imaginary. But we don't want to know the physical being that made us, that made all this stuff. What physical being did this? Let's go back here. And hear one more time. Let's keep it moving, okay? Look, the researchers published in the open access acquired essential foreign genes, okay, are the only true evolution. This is from the daily alien genes. Scientists discover DNA is not from our ancestors and say it could... Uh, change how we think about evolution. This is from the Daily Mail Science, okay? Look at this. Remember, it says humans, okay? Remember, black people, okay, are the only true humans on the planet Earth, according to science. Humans, aka black people, contain alien genes not passed down from our ancestors, researchers discovered. They say we acquired essential foreign genes from microorganisms cohabiting their environment in ancient times. The study challenges conventional... Now let me pause. So your Bible, your first book of the Bible, starts with Genesis. I know what the fucking book is talking about. Genesis. You break the word Genesis apart, and you have genes. And that's what it's dealing with. It's dealing with genetics. God in the Bible says, well, the God in the Bible is saying that shit, but man is telling telling man, don't mix with these other races of people. Because your DNA is going to become fucked up, your bloodline. So you got genes, or Genesis. Right? Now we're going through meaning. So Genesis, it says the origin or mode of formation or of something. Right? Okay. Yo guys, we ain't dealing no damn Adam and Eve. We ain't dealing with that shit. We predate that that bullshit. Adam is the one that, that God made. Adam is the goddamn white man. So Genesis, or take off this, and you have gene, genes, genetics, DNA, right, and origin, creation or beginning. relies solely on genes passed down through ancestral lines and says the process could still be going on. Look, researchers published in the open access journal Genome Biology focuses on the horizontal gene transfer, the transfer of between animals and li living organisms in the same environment. Okay? And so we have alien genes, okay, confirmed by science. This is a fact. Now let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Okay? O negative blood type. Okay. I went over this before. Now, 
let's go to this man right here. Francis Harry Compton Crick. All right, and what is he was a British molecular biologist, biophysicist, and neuroscientist. In 1953, he co-authored with James Watson the academic paper proposing the double helix structure of the DNA molecule. Together with Watson and Maurice Wilkins, Wilkins, he was jointly he was jointly awarded the 1962 Nobel Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their discoveries concerning the molecular structure of nuclei nucleic acids and its significance for format for information transfer in living material. Okay? One second. Okay, so we're dealing with DNA. And this is the man right here who so-called discovered DNA. Genes. Okay? Now, I want to read one more time. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's put this to the side. And now we're dealing with genes and DNA and all that type of shit. So ancient alien ancestors, right? Advanced technology that terraformed our world. Real heart. Let's read the back of this. This is Michael Primo, author of Forbidden Archaeology and Human Devolution. He's he's given this man credit for this book that he wrote. So Michael Cremo, author of Forbidden Archaeology. Now he's now this man, Arthur Cremo, I mean uh, uh Michael Cremo, he came up with this book right here that I have. He came up with this book right here. Uh, let me go to my YouTube channel. So I'm not just speaking shout out to them. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the sources. He's quoting, he's using this book right here. For Grinning Archaeology, Michael Cremo. The same book that I have at home. Let's read this. Michael Cremo, author of Forbidden Archaeology. Quote, a valuable contribution to the literature literature on the origin of life on our planet. The current mainstream scientific explanations do not work. I especially appreciate Hart, meaning this author, Will Hart's presentation of information about spacecraft, Vimanas, drawn from the ancient Sanskrit writings of India. Let's, let's read this. In the early 1970s, Nobel, Nobel Prize winning DNA co-discovery co-discovery Sir Francis Crick what I just this man right here this man right here this white man this Neanderthal this primate half human half beast Sir Francis Crick and his colleague Lesio Orgel proposed that in the distant past an extraterrestrial race sent a spacecraft loaded with a with microorganisms to see life with it to see the to see the earth with life. Now more than 40 years later the fields of space science the fields of space research and biotechnology have advanced to the point where they can back up Creek Crick and Orgel's claim about our ancient alien ancestors. But keep in mind you white people and you non Africans these ancient so-called aliens or extraterrestrials are not your ancestors. These ancient extraterrestrials made you all. And we come from these people. You black, you black Negroes, you, you Africans. You come from these ancient so-called extraterrestrials. Where they come from, we don't know. They come with all that shit to me. They come from the Pleiades, the, 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 Pleiades, the Dog Stars series, Series 1, Series 2, uh, Mars. You can't date niggas. Can't date us. Right? Okay, now let's check. Now let's read this. I'm going to read to you what, what this man don't say. This man, Richard Dawkins, he's an atheist, right? He doesn't believe in God, right? Because he knows that God's an imaginary being. This man right here. Okay. 
Okay, so now check this out. Check this out. Okay, so Richard Dawkins, this man right here, we're gonna read what he what he's what he uh acknowledges. He stands with the evolution theory. Right? This man right here, Richard Dawkins. This man right here, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Who just passed away? The guy just passed away. Stephen Hawkins, we're gonna dig into what he what he proposed at the end of his death. But they can't come out and admit it. Stephen Hawkins, what did he say? Stephen Hawkins, he was a theoretical physicist, cos cosmo uh, cosmologist. Okay? He's talking about gravitational black holes and things like that. Right? So let's get into the information. Let's read this. I'm going to try to read this in, in its entirety. Let's read this. The con introduction, the contact and colonization of Earth, of the Earth. Astronaut Al Warden said this, I see some kind of intelligent being like us skipping around the universe from planet to planet as, let's say, the South Pacific Indians do on the islands where they skip from island to island. I think, that what's, I think that's what the alien space program is all about. Now let's read this. He says, this is the second book in the series this is the second book in this series. The first volume, the first volume, the Genesis Race, primarily ex ex examined artifacts, sacred texts, and oral traditions from human history that tell of gods descended from outer space to the earth. These alien gods, the Genesis Race, had had as their mission to see life on the planet and to extend their civilization through the creation of humankind. He says, in this volume, I present the scientific basis for the theory of directed panspermia, which, which posits which posits that life via microorganisms was shipped to Earth by an extraterrestrial civilization. The theory was first proposed by the late Nobel, Nobel Prize winning microbiologist Sir Francis Creek, co-founder of the shape and design of the DNA molecule in the 1950s. Now why isn't this why is he why isn't this documented in the Wikipedia. Why isn't this documented in the, in the Wikipedia? Okay. When you talk about panspermia and things like that, that, that he that he adheres that he that he had adhered to. Why isn't that on here? You can read about this. That's not on here. Let's keep on going. This book makes it clear. That the concept of the Genesis race is a theoretical framework that goes beyond the general theory and shows that there, that there is an extensive ancient and modern day evidence of extraterrestrial involvement, contact, and colonization of the earth. This theory is not just this series is not just a simple catalog of historical and present day enigmas and anomalies. Okay? So when the Bible says that they saw Ezekiel said he saw a human like man. And they call him the Lord in the side of the spaceship. A craft. Right? Let's keep on going. Let's read this. Let's see these extraterrestrial thoughts. Section 1. Directed panspermia. The seeding of our world. Let's look at the word panspermia. We're trying to find out how we got here. What put us here? Somebody spoke some shit into existence or what happened? You don't have to agree with what I say, but this is the research that I've done. So panspermia from ancient Greek meaning all, meaning seed, meaning seed life. Okay, is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by space dust, meteoroids, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, and planetoids. Okay, and also by spacecraft carrying uh, unintended contamination by microorganisms. Okay, let's keep on going. Let's read this. Life from the cosmos, photo curves courtesy of, of NASA. I'm going to try to read this in its entirety if I have enough time. I 
Might not have enough time. I'm going to try to. The notion that life originated elsewhere in the universe and later arrived on Earth is not the stuff of any science fiction writer's imagination. Today, it is a solid scientific theory that explains how life came to Earth from the cosmos. The first documented mention of the idea appears in the writings of the 5th century BCE Greek philosopher Anagoras. He called his thesis panspermia, a Greek term that means seeds everywhere. More than 2,000 years later, on April 9, 1864, the French chemist, chemist Louis Pasteur reported his experiment disproving spontaneous generations. This was a devastating blow to Charles Darwin's theory regarding the origin of, the origin of life, which he held that life as a direct result of, gener of, of, of spontaneous generations. In other words, non-living things spontaneously produce living things. Then in 1870, the British physicist Lloyd Kevlin William Thomas and the German physicist Hermann von uh, Helmholtz reinforced Pasteur's findings and argued that life might have originated in space and been transported to Earth. Next, in the first decade of the 1900s, the Swedish, the Swedish chemist and Nobel laureate savant Arenas theorized that bacterial spores propelled through space by light pressure were the mechanisms that seeded life on Earth. In his day, the concept was pure scientific speculation because it had not been proven that life forms could survive the extreme conditions of interstellar space. In fact, most scientists at the time were not convinced that any could. However, science has since shown that such life forms, such as extra mobiles, Extramophiles do indeed exist. What is extramophile? What is that? Extra extreme So it says extreme is an organism that thrives in physically or geochemically extreme conditions that are detrimental to most life on Earth. Let's keep on going. Let's see. In the 1960s, Sir Fred Hoyle and Chander Bergmark were trying to identify the contents of interstellar dust by finding something that would match its infrared st signature. Hoyle Hoyle was an astro uh, was an astronomer, and Bishopman was an astrobiologist, and neither was found and neither was out to prove the tenets of panspermia. Um, more than three decades ago, Hoyle and Bishopman began arguing the case for why for the widespread occurrence of micro of uh, micro bow life in the universe. They drew their conclusions from studies of interstellar, of interstellar dust grains and found a vast array of molecules to be present in space, which they believe to represent components that may have derived from biology. Let's keep on going. So they're talking about all these things, right? And it says here that these same guys, as their research proceeded, other noted researchers reported finding Folly, folly uh, aroma, aromatic molecules in interstellar dust signatures. Then in 1972, per, per, uh, pervasive, pervasive evidence showing that the dust contained pro, propions was also obtained. Propions are, are carbon based molecules, not rocks. That is, they came from something that probably was, that probably once was what we call alive. You see that? So these guys are talking about this stuff, right? And it says that, according to the theory, if a given planet presents the right conditions, 
that bacteria became active and the process of, evolu of evolution begins. Panspermia is not meant to address the ultimate question of how life began. It only addresses the issue of the mechanisms and methods that, that, that cause life to spread and be, sub and be sustained and how life arrives on earth. Okay? Now, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Now, let's go. Now, check this out. Check this out. It says here that the presence of carbon-based matters in meteorites supports the possibility that life on our planet could have come from outer space. But even though life on Earth is composed of organic matter, that in itself is not considered life. We cannot yet conclude we could not yet conclusively prove that life exists in outer space and was transported to Earth by the way of bacteria. Nonetheless, we are getting closer to that conclusion. So now we're going to jump down to, to this guy, Francis Crick. There's another theory that goes beyond a simple and random spread of life by the way of microbes embedded in rocks or pushed by light waves. Directed panspermia takes the theory of quantum leap further by proposing that the microbes that arise on Earth were intentionally sent here by highly advanced civilization. Niggas. Once again, this may sound like science. Once again, this may sound like the stuff of science fiction novels, but it is not. As previously noted, Francis Crick proposed the theory in the 1950s. Given Crick's unimpeachable scientific credentials, being the co discoverer of DNA molecule, no one can dismiss this theory out of hand without having himself or herself come under close scrutiny, come under close scientific scrutiny. Crick presented his view of the rectus panspermia and the argument in the support of, of his theory of this theory in a small and little known book titled Life Itself, Its Origin and Nature, published in 18 in 1981. At the time, Crick was a member of the Medical Research Council Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, England. In Cambridge, England L.D. Orgel, Orgel, a British chemist, worked for the Salk Institute for Bio Biological Studies based in San Diego. In a paper they, they co authored in 1973, they wrote the following It was not until the middle 19th century that Paschal and Tyndale completed the demonstration that spontaneous generation is not occurring on Earth nowadays. Darwin and a number of other biologists concluded that life must have evolved long ago when conditions were more favorable. Some other scientists, however, drew a quite different conclusion. They supposed that life that uh, they suppose that it life does not evolve from terrestrial non-living uh, matter nowadays. It may never have been it may have never done so. Hence, they argued life reached the Earth as an infection from another planet. They also addressed the issue of undirected panspermia. They say, It now seems unlikely that extraterrestrials living, the extraterrestrial living organisms could have reached the Earth either as spores driven, driven by the radiation pressure from another star or as living organisms embedded in a meteorite. As an alternative, to these 19th century mechanisms, we have considered directed panspermia, the theory that organisms were deliberately transmitted to Earth by intelligent beings on another planet. We conclude that it is possible that life reached Earth in this way. As a prerequisite to proposing that, as a prerequisite to proposing their alternative to Darwinian evolution, Crick and Orgel raised numerous scientific ob uh, objections to that theory. The scientists were not at all convinced that enough time had elapsed on Earth to account for the sudden appearance of complex organi organisms about 3 billion years ago. Now, I've already proven that 2.8 2, 2. billion years ago, somebody was on, on Earth making metal groove spheres. Let's keep on going. Okay, so Francis Crick and this guy's talking about these things, right? Alright? And let's go. Okay?
For their part, Crick and Auger was not convinced that undirected panspermia was a strong enough mechanism to support the arrival of the seeds of, seeds of life on Earth, but posed that an advanced civilization had packed a space probe with microbes and sent, a sent, and sent it to infect Earth with the seeds of life. In his book, Life Itself, Life Itself, Crick summed up his views in the following statement. Directed pans, panspermia postulates that the roots of our form of life go back to another planet in the universe, almost certainly another planet, that it had reached a very advanced form, therefore, there before anything much had started here, and that life here was seeded by microorganisms sent on some form of spaceship by an advanced civilization. Now, this is this white man saying this. The, D the DNA code discovery. How come Wikipedia is not saying this? How come, how come Wikipedia is not saying this, what this man is saying? Because they hide it. They hide the truth. They don't want you to know that black folks uh, is God. They don't want you to know that black folks created all this shit. And the so-called extraterrestrials are, are niggas. Let's keep on going. In fact, both panspermia and directed panspermia predict the absence of transitional life forms. The missing link that evolutionists have tried to uncover in vain ever since Darwin proposed his theory 150 years ago. The public is giving false impressions that this that the only missing link not accounted for is the one that separates apes and humans. The fact is that there are thousands of missing links in the, in the plant and animal kingdoms. For example, the question arises. Where are the missing links that should exist between now non-flowering plants and flowering plants? In addition, where are the missing links that should connect non-pollinating pollinating insects and bees that are necessary to pollinate the flowering plants? In other words, why do flowering plants and, ble and bees, which depend on each other, suddenly appear in the wreck without any intermediate forms? These issues Vex hardcore Darwinians, and they were, and they were one fact that compelled Crick and Orgel to formulate the theory of directed panspermia. You see that? Now let's drop down here. Now we, now we about to get into the nitty gritty of what, of what these people hide. Okay. So he says here that. Um. Now, let's review a list of some of the hard scientific evidence in support of the idea that the seeds of life originated in outer space and arrived on Earth very late in the cosmic scheme of things. Let's read this. September 24, 1970. For the first time, an unnamed spacecraft, an unmanned, an unmanned spacecraft delivered a lunar soil sample to Earth. The Soviet Union's lunar 16 spacecraft returning from the moon's sea of fertility for virility with 101 grams of lunar regular and the in a hermetically sealed container February February 1972 only 120 kilometers from the lunar 16 site on the moon lunar 20 used a drill with a 10 inch hollow core bit to collect another regular sample which was also hermetically sealed 1979, the sealed containers from the lunar mission were promptly delivered to a laboratory in 1972 to be examined, to be examined and photographed, but even after hundreds of the pictures were published in the Atlas in 1979, the biological nature of some of the particles were not noticed at first glance. 1984, a meteorite that had been blasted off from the surface of, the, of Mars about 15 million, 15 million years ago was found in Antarctica by a team of scientists searching for meteors. The space rock was named Allen Hills 84001. This is, this is, these are sources and references for your ass. May 9, 1955, two scientists at California Polytech State University showed that bacteria can survive without any metabolism for at least 25 million years. They opinioned that, the, they, opinioned that they might be immortal. Now let's go to Henry, Henry the Lax. Who the fuck they talking about? Niggas, man. Talking about black people. Henry Etta Lax. Henry 
and a lax. Now let me hurry up. Henry I'm trying to hurry. Okay. Lax type in Lax Foundation. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this stuff. I'm I'm, I'm maneuvering through, through too many damn things. Give me one second. Henry. Henry had a lax. Okay, so Henry had a lax. This black woman, and they found that her cells were immortal. Her cells were able to reproduce themselves and they were immortal and they stripped her down for DNA. You can read about this. Let's keep on going. 19, uh, November 24, 1955, the New York Times described bacteria that can survive radiation much stronger than any Earth that has ever experienced. Who can survive radiation? Gamma rays, UV light, niggas. August 7, 1996, after a decade of research, NASA announced that researchers have found evidence of ancient life in meteorite AHL 84001 from Mars. So what is this, Allen? What is this? Here we go. You got Allen Hills 84001. So here's the Allen Hills. It's a Martian meteorite that was found in Allen Hills, Antarctica on December 27, 1984. They said he found this. Okay? Let's keep on going. Let me hurry up. Spring 1988, a NASA scientist announced evidence of fossilized microscopic life forms in a meteorite not only not from any known planet. Spring 1988, a microfossil that was found in a meteorite and photographed in 1966 was recognized by a Russian, by a Russian microbiologist as a magnetic uh, tactic bacterium. Fall 1998, NASA public position on life from space shifted dramatically. January 4th, 1989, NASA officially recognized the possibility that life on Earth comes to space. March 9th, 1989, NASA scientists announced that the two most meteorites held even stronger fossilized evidence for past life on Mars. March, uh, April 26, 2000, the German team operated the mass a uh, spectrometer on NASA's Stardust mission announced the, the detection of very large organic molecules in space. Non-biological non sources for organic molecules so large were not known then. October 19, 2000, a team of biologists and a geologist now announced the revival of bacteria that are 250 million years old, strengthening the case that bacteria spores can be immortal. De December 13, 2000, a NASA team demonstrated that the magnetic, uh, uh, mag mag what is that? Mm -mm. Uh, magnetone, magnetosomes in Mars meteorite ALH8401 are biological. May 11, 2001, geologist Bruno D. Arginio and molecular biologist Giuseppe Geraci from the University of Nepal has announced that, that they have found extraterrestrial bacteria inside a meteorite estimated to be more than 4.5 billion years old. June 2002, geneticists reported evidence that the evolutionary step from chips to humans was assisted, was assisted by viruses. June, uh, August 2nd, 2004, very convincing electron microscopic Microscope photos of fossilized cy cyanobacteria in a meteorite were reported by NASA astrobiologist Richard B. Hoover. January 25, 2005, J. Craig Venter, a biologist, invented a sequence, a, uh, invented, involved in sequencing the human genome and endorsed panspermia. May 10, 2007, 
eminent biologist E. O. Wilson endorsed panspermia. April 18, 2008. Richard Dawkins, an evolutionary biologist, endorsed panspermia. panspermia. He's an atheist. So what is panspermia? Meaning that life was brought here. See, the life was brought here by extraterrestrial. Who the fuck is the extraterrestrial? Niggas. God damn. April 7, 2009. Stephen Hawkins, a world-renowned physicist, endorsed panspermia. This white man, this white man just died. Stephen Hawkins. He wanted to learn about uh, multiverses and all that shit. This, this white man passed away. Stephen Hawkins. He passed away. And he endorsed panspermia. May 2nd, 2009. Freeman Dyson, a physicist and mathematician, spoke favorably about panspermia. February 26, 2010. Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist, endorsed panspermia in a 10-minute video titled Cosmos, a Space-Time Odyssey, Episode 11. Neil deGrasse Tyson, this nigga endorsed panspermia. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Who else? In May 10, 2010, We Are Not Alone, Why We Have Already Found Extraterrestrial Life, a book about astrobiology by Dr. Uh, Sluch McCoo and David J. Darling, that includes the topic of panspermia was published. January 25, 2011, Sandra uh, Bigfoot Ming had a new article, Viva Panspermia, available online. February 28, 2011, a two-hour video program about panspermia and related, to and related topics became available on the, internet, on the internet. Quote, Finding Life Beyond Earth. Nova 2011, available on, on, on YouTube. October, uh, August 24, 2011, panspermia is more likely than we thought. A new analysis revealed. Website panspermia.org. Brig Kleiss. Article, Introduction, More Than Panspermia. September 1, 2001, an article titled, Earth Could Spread Life Across the Milky Way by Tammy Plotner, appeared on Universe Today, the Space and, Ast and Astronomy News Blog, www.universetoday.com. October 10, 2001, the new term, Nino, Neopanspermia and, patheo, and Pathopanspermia, were introduced in a paper available online. In addition to explaining the origin of life, a form of panspermia suggests that life is, continu is continually arriving on Earth from space. This possibility, Milton uh, Rand Randwright's term neopanspermia, meaning neo is new, Hoyle and Virgin mix also su suggests that pandemic disease may originate from space, an idea covered by term pathopanspermia and, pa and uh, pathopanspermia or pathospermia. February 13, 2015, scientists U of Buckingham in the UK have examined a tiny metal circular object and are suggesting it might be a microorganism deliberately sent by aliens to create life on Earth. UK scientists. Aliens may have seeded life on Earth. The mighty, uh, uh, the minuscule object was discovered by astrophysicist Milton Randwright. Mounting evidence supporting some form of panspermia seeding life, speed seeding Earth with life in the remote past is gaining momentum every year as new data from space probes is made available. The publicly disclosed acceptance of theory of the theory of eminent scholars, of eminent scientists in, re in, in recent years is indicative of the paradigm shift in the scientific community. We should be clear that the acceptance of the theory of panspermia does not mean that the theory of directed, of directed panspermia has also been accepted. However, it may represent an important, an important first step in the direction. And the, uh, uh, the Genesis race theory goes beyond all forms of panspermia and directed panspermia by positing or positing, positing not only that life was seated on Earth by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization, 
but that the same civilization also intervened in the evolutionary process to create humans and to generate civilization. So the extraterrestrials, our ancient ancestors, came here and made a new man. Who did they make? The goddamn white man. The white man that is 93% human and 7 and 12% primate, Neanderthals. That's facts for your ass. I didn't even, I didn't even go into the whole book because I don't have enough time. I have to make a three part. So they talk about the battle over Los Angeles that occurred in 1942. They saw this big ass spaceship and they started shooting at it. They couldn't bring it down. Who the fuck made that? It wasn't white people because you fuckers only been here for 65, for 6, for 6,000, for 6, 65,000 years, 6,000 years. So it wasn't you. It wasn't you Mexican or Hispanics or you Native American Indians or you, or you Asians. Who was it? It was niggas. So if you want to know who your God of the Bible is, the God of the Bible is a is a uh, imaginary being. But the but the beings that made us, that made every goddamn thing, is niggas. That's facts. That's facts. How are you gonna debunk this shit? You can't. You coming from one goddamn book, the fucking Bible. I'm coming from all sources and putting all this shit together. Now come back with some, come back with some, talk some dumb shit. Since you, since you fuckers are so into science, I don't believe in God. I know who God is. I know who and what God is. Let's go back here to Western Muhammad video on the black man is who is God, and science confirms that the black man and woman is God. What the fuck are you niggas not understanding? And you other white, and you and you other races of the people. Why can't they get all this shit out talking about some, um, 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 these, these extraterrestrials are, uh, Palladians and Greys and Draconians and, and, and all this other bullshit, but they cover up the fact that the whole time the extraterrestrials are niggas. Let's read it. Let's, let's listen to this again. If I told you that your donation would... Shut the fuck up. Do it, 
I'm, I'm asking the question, where the fuck we come from? Where we come from? Who put us there? How we get here? Who made us? We do real religion. We do religion as mathematics. We do God as we do. So I'm not going to use the fluffy religious language. Because that would just confuse you and frustrate my purposes for today. Do we have any idea when this might have occurred? Yes, we in fact do have an idea. Carbon is exclusively formed in the interior of stars. The abundant carbon found in your and my body is literally stardust blasted from the core of dying red giants the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said what came out of space was a human being the human being came from space the black human being the black man is God the black man and woman is God wake the fuck up the black man and woman is God we come from fucking out of space you can't date us man you just heard from the, from the goddamn science they admitted it but their own fucking mouth said that that 100% humans, black people, Africans, DNA is not from, from here. Close when these windows out. Let's go. Let's 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 hear it again. What the fuck, are you niggas not not understanding? Why can't you accept the fact that that black folks niggas are 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 that? Were that highly advanced and tech and technologically advanced to create all it to make all this shit. Let's see it again. From your own goddamn science. Shut the fuck up. So if you subscribe to the thing, to the theory that 
aliens, extraterrestrials are coming back. When you, when you read shit like this, Eric Von Daniken's book, Church of the Gods, the gods told them in every culture that they're going to they come back. So who the fuck is coming back? A, a older virgin of niggas. Wake the fuck up. Why do you think they had the shit at Area 51? It ain't shit over there. They got to keep your ass in clothes, in trap, not think of your goddamn self, stuck in a fucking book. One book. Eric Von, Eric Von Daniken. Eric Von, Von Daniken, Chariots of the Gods. That nigga died? Eric Von Daniken died? Damn. Chariots of the Gods. I got 10 minutes left. I got, yeah, 10 minutes left. Let me hear you up. Uh, the Gods. Who were the gods? In ancient times, it said that all the gods were black people. Willie Harris. Who the fucking gods? Black men and black women. If you subscribe to this extraterrestrial stuff and the spaceships out of space and, it's, and, and, the, and the gods uh, uh, helped the uh, people build the pyramids, well, who the fuck was it? It wasn't no white people. It was an older form of niggas. That highly advanced. Chariots of the gods. The uh, chariots of the gods. The gods promise, promise to come back. If you subscribe to this shit, I'm breaking the shit down for you. Don't quote no goddamn Bible verses. Promise to come back. Okay, chariots of the gods. I got this book at the crib. Right. And I think this dude passed away. I think he died. I'm not for sure. But Chariots of the Gods, you know what I'm saying? This book right here, Chariots of the Gods, involved the hypothesis that the technologies and religions of many ancient civilizations were given to them by ancient astronauts who were working as gods. Okay? Right? Such artifacts include the ancient, uh, Egyptian pyramids, Stonehenge, and Easter Island, all that shit, Nazca Lines in Peru, Right? And it says that uh, 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 which Von Danik describes as showing the Earth as seen from outer space from space and that's lines of group which he suggests may have been cons constructed by humans as, as crude replicas of previous alien structures as a way to call the aliens back to Earth. Okay? The Bible talks about extraterrestrials and all that shit. Ezekiel's talking about a fucking spaceship. Alright? Okay, I don't know what your niggas not getting. Our DNA is not from this fucking earth. You cannot date niggas. You can't date us. Now. You came from the ground and you're in my body. It's literally stardust. Blasted from the core of dying red giants. The most son of Elijah Muhammad said what came out of space was a human being. The human being came from space. It didn't come from no fucking Africa. We came from fucking out of space, man. God, wait the fuck up. God damn. So if you read books that talk about extraterrestrial abducting people, there ain't no white people that's flying these fucking spaceships around. You ain't been here that long, god damn it. It's niggas that's flying around these fucking spaceships. So whenever they decide to make themselves known, you're going to see a, a, nothing but an older version of what I look like. So if you subscribe to the theory that Jesus is coming back, and they make themselves known, and all you see a bunch of niggas get off the spaceship. How the fuck do you know who was who? We say, hey, that's Jesus. And the one you call Jesus can say, that's not me. You got the wrong nigga. Try again. Break the fuck up. Niggas don't do, do no goddamn research, but you quick to put me on blast and try to shut my ass down. But when I come to you some hard ass facts, you want to quote some fucking Bible verses. But I can show you the people who wrote your fucking book. Now, let's go back to the second N-word. God damn it. Let me go if I got five minutes left. The sacred N-word. The sacred N-word is not an Egyptian deity. The word nigger is not an Egyptian deity. I would have broke that shit down. When you say the word nigger, you would say, Master, you my God. I'm in a worship you. 
They call our ancestors niggas. They were calling us God, but we are fucking God. That ain't no, that ain't no uh, racist word. These white folks know what the fuck this word is. That's why they try to ban the word. Nigger is the oldest word in the world. It's even in the fucking Bible. Nigger is the ancestor of Christ. So if you believe that Jesus is, is, is real and he lived, well, guess what? He's your fucking ancestor. The ancestors. Assholes. Wake the fuck up. Such is the question of the word nigger. Dictionaries state it is the Latin word. However, be, uh, philologists, linguists who study ancient who study ancient writings found on stones and pyramid caves date the word back to 30,000 B.C. Latin, Latin is dated back to around 500 B.C. Nigger, the same as niggas, means king, chief, or queen, goddess, or divine one. You black women, if you are a black woman, you are a nigger. You are a goddess. You are a divine. It is not a white word nor a Latin word. It exists before the white man or any other people had a written language. Okay? Wake the fuck up. It's always been about you. It's All this shit is still around you. Nigger. N-G-R. From or belonging. G equals first or beginning. R equals Ra of the source God. So N-G-R means from or belonging to the source. The original first people. Who are the original first people? These, these niggas. And, it's, and, and that, that predates that. The Stone Age. Stone Age. Stone Age. And you got some shit. And you got this shit. Let me hurry up. I got three minutes left. Let me hurry the fuck up. Control the fire. You got these niggas. These are niggas. 1.5 million years ago. But you guys, but you gotta keep in mind that niggas come from fucking out of space. So you got some, some niggas that's older than this shit. Wake the fuck up. With that being said, I say peace. Click subscribe if you like to hear so far. Like you heard so far, all my information is free of charge. I don't, I'm not gonna charge you. What the fuck am I charge you for? We ready, we ready for this shit to end. We want, you, you say you want your ancestors to come back. You want these fucking aliens, these extra, these extraterrestrials to come back. Well, guess what? When they come back, what you gonna see? A bunch of niggas. That's fucking facts. Peace.